Sherman and we are at my exhibition in Houston, Texas at Fultz Fine Art and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the work in the show. There's a little bit of the purging the internal. There's also this figurative reference on top of that tying it in together. There's, an, there's a collage. There's a fake collage. There's a contemporary color palette. Uh, this, this particular body of work if we go around the corner, things have become a little less of what might feel like a uh, cartoonish explosion going off, and a little bit more object-oriented. Um, the color choices have become a little bit more selective, a little bit more distilled. Things aren't quite as polychromatic as they used to be. And ironically, the work is more colorful than ever. Uh, in addition to new scales happening in the work, um, uh, materials have changed a little. I've normally, I'm known for a lot of uh, small 9 by 12 inch works on paper. Uh, in this show, I've got a lot of 9 inch by 12 inch works, but they are on sheets of canvas. And in this instance, a few of them are small paintings. They're mounted on, on wooden panels. And in this instance, I started drilling into the, into, the, into the work. So I was able to do something kind of physical and assertive uh, with a new material for me, which was really exciting. With new materials, rather, because of the sheets of canvas as well. Um, I've worked with canvas, but not at this scale and not in such an intimate way. I've done most of this work here in Houston during the pandemic. This, this particular painting is 100 inches tall, 100 inches vertical, and 60 inches horizontal, about 60 inches wide. And then I wanted to talk to you all about a couple of assemblages that I want to include in the show. So I did the assemblages in the studio in New York. If you look closely at it, in addition to the sort of sculptural, more tactile qualities of it, there are things that might feel like chalk on, maybe chalk on a blackboard when it's actually just paint. Uh, I guess five or six years ago, I started doing what I would call these assemblage pieces, uh, w which were all paper, paper that was mounted on, I can show you one. There's a sort of a brown and black one here on the opposite page, but this orange and white piece is the piece on the cover of the book. And I was doing these, if you, I was doing these in paper, and because they were so big, I needed to mount them on something a little more sturdy. And so I mounted them on canvas. I wasn't as interested in sculptural surfaces that protruded 8, 10, 15 inches off the surface. They would get a little flatter. If some sort of tactile, three-dimensional component happened, great. But I wasn't trying to, you know, essentially bulk out the surface as much as I was in those earlier paper pieces. In some cases, it was just like a lot of paper. And in this case, raw canvas. What would also come into play, which informed all the rest of the work, was I would take um, not just raw canvas, but I would cut up old unresolved paintings, such as this piece right here, and I would work them into a new piece. I would cannibalize my older work um, and repurpose it to use uh, in bits and pieces of the new work. And then that started to inform all of the work at any different scale. So you can walk through my show and you can see me collaging old, old works on paper that I've cut up or torn up and old paintings that I've cut up and torn up the canvas. You can see those repurposed in the new work. I'm very interested in mark making and what constitutes mark making, how you make a mark. It's all about, they're paintings, and they're, uh, but everything's all about drawing for me. Ironically, you know, the cover of that book is called Texas Abstract, but there's so many figurative references in these. So if you look around, they're pretty obvious in the small ones over there, they feel like portraits. But if you look around, you can see lots of various figurative references in these paintings even though they also are quoting a lot of uh, modernist art history related to abstract expressionism, color field painting, neo-expressionism, 
Um, but they've become more and more object oriented over the years as well. And there's, there's, they don't sit too comfortably in one area or another, you know, or one historical movement or another. I've kind of tried to synthesize all of those uh, through my own sort of lens 